You are now listening to Imprint with Nesreen on Yahella Voice. It's time for Imprint on Yahella Voice. I'm your host, Nesreen, and our wonderful director, Heba Mahmoud. Imprint brings you individuals that have left imprints for us to learn and benefit from. Listen to us live on www.yehelavoice.com. The internationally acclaimed author and media critic Dr. Jack Shaheen is a committed internationalist and devoted humanist. His lectures and writings illustrate that damaging racial and ethnic stereotypes of Asians, blacks, and others injure innocent people. He defines crude caricatures, explains why they persist, and provides workable solutions to help shatter misconceptions. He is a recipient of the Ellis Island Medal of Honor in 2013, among other awards, and has given over 1,000 lectures in nearly all 50 states. Dr. Shaheen has written many books dealing with the stereotypes in the media, specifically dealing with Arabs and Muslims. This includes his award-winning book and DVD, Real Bad Arabs, How Hollywood Vilifies a People. He's appeared on national network programs such as CNN, MSNBC, Nightline, Good Morning America, and The Today Show, and many more. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jack Shaheen. It's great to have you on the show, Jack. Thank you. How are you this evening? I'm doing very well. Jack, I want to first talk about what led you to research the vilification of Arabs and Muslims in the media. Well, you're going way back now to the uh, early 1970s. My, my children were never allowed to watch television except Saturday morning. And one Saturday morning, they saw some cartoons with some really... Bad, 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 bad Arabs uh, being trounced by their favorite cartoon characters like Popeye, Bugs mm-hmm. Bunny, Porky Pig. And they called that to my attention. And at the time, I was doing research on movies about nuclear war and public television and children's programming. And I thought, well, this looks interesting. So I asked them to monitor Saturday morning cartoons. And then I went out and I bought uh, a subscription to TV Guide. And I began looking each and every week at the descriptions of the shows, comedies, dramas, documentaries, to see whether they focused on the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I found all of these programs and began taking notes. And in 1975, I wrote my first article called The TV Arab. But it took three years to get it published. Jack, why don't you tell me about the renowned stereotype of Arabs or Muslims that you see depicted in the media? Well, historically... It's always been the Arab and the Muslim as the evil enemy other. Uh, It hasn't, you know, it was was really deeply embedded in our psyches prior to 9-11. Everyone thinks 9-11 altered the landscape. That's not true. Mm -hmm. What 9-11 did is it brought in a new stereotype. That is the Arab American, the Muslim American, and Islam, of the religion, as the most threatening elements that we should be concerned about. But this particular stereotype, you always, almost always, uh, they are the villain. I mean, it's that simple. And uh, they are inept. They are vicious. They always use religion as an excuse to kill. 
pretend, they dress funny, they speak funny. Mm -hmm. The women are backward or they're terrorists or they're bosomy belly dancers that nobody wants. You know, the men are either wealthy, obese, shakes, terrorists. So or just inept, uh, or, or are inept villains, or, mm -hmm. or, or bargainers in suits that cheat you. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have these same images that are repeated over and over again, not only on television and cinema, but in children's books, and in also in editorial cartoons. It's in all aspects of American popular culture. Jack, let's talk about one movie in particular that you have included in your book, Real Bad Arabs, as well as in the DVD, Rules of Engagement. What's wrong with this movie? Well, this is probably one of the most racist movies Hollywood has ever released. And there's malicious intent in this particular film because it shows American Marines slaughtering women and children civilians in Yemen, and they're justified in killing them all. And this was written by, or the story was by uh, a, a politician in Virginia, James Webb. And he, the film is based on his story. And it was produced in cooperation with the Department of Defense, which to me makes no sense whatsoever. What's the Department of Defense doing? Spending our taxpayer money you know, uh, making movies that slaughtering Yemeni civilians. And, and the entire film just feels, justifies this slaughter. You know, if I, and I'm being very serious now, had I been a high-powered attorney, I would have taken the producers to court. Now, I would have lost the case, but I would have made a, I would have made a big hubbub about it. The other thing about this film is that what, what the producers fail to realize, that in Yemen, they made copies of this film, and they took it to every village that had a VCR or, or a DVD player, and they were showing it throughout the country. So, I mean, what, what, what's a Yemeni supposed to think when he watches or she watches a movie like this? Does this bring us closer together, mm -hmm. or does it separate us? You know, you have a responsibility as a filmmaker. And, and the responsibility here was to make a lot of money and, and, and to show a film that portrayed Arabs as subhuman. So what was the plan of that movie uh, from a media critic's perspective? What, I mean, what does it teach individuals who watch the film about Arabs based on the images or actions in question? That it's perfectly all right to kill an Arab. Even Arab children, they don't deserve to live. They're all terror. So what about the young Yemeni girl uh, with one leg on a crutch? Oh, well, she's also a terrorist. You know, she's trying, she's shooting at the Marines. <laughs> well, this film is very, just. I, I had difficulty watching this film. So let's, how about we go to something that I would confidently say that many Arabs or American Arabs grew up watching, and it's also on your list of movies that vilify Arabs, Aladdin. Why? Oh, I come from a land from a faraway place where the caravan camels roam, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. I mean, what a way to begin a children's movie, right? Yeah, almost everyone in Aladdin, all of the Arabs just about, are these obese characters, the guards without teeth, wielding sabers. Aladdin is anglicized, Yasmin is anglicized. They don't even have an Arab genie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a blue genie, it's Robin Williams. And even at one point in the film, he says, Aladdin says, call me Al. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a big argument with Jeffrey Katzenberg, the producer of this film, because he loves it. He, he didn't see anything wrong with it. 
Now, some might argue that poking fun at Arabs or Muslims or any other group of individuals is just for pure entertainment. I mean, he argue uh, what is the difference is between propaganda? Mm -hmm. This isn't poking fun. This is real fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's every old stereotype from the past. Now, many do argue what is the difference between poking fun or vilifying Arabs or any other racial group. Well, I, I think it's intent, and I think every case is different. And, and we're not talking about poking fun. We're talking about vilifying of people. I mean, comedy's fine. I mean, you've got the access of evil. You know, people like Mazzabrani and, uh, mm -hmm. and Ahmed, Ahmed and Dean Obidala and, and I, I'm trying to, May Soon, uh, whatever her, what's her last name? The, the gal who goes around. She's a good friend. She's going to be upset at me. But they travel and, 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 and they use humor to break down the stereo. So. so what does this do to the bond between Americans and Arabs or even American Arabs? Well, I think... First of all, what it does is it it, it says that your hair, your roots are are, are, are are really they're violent. That you come from a race of uh, of villains, of people who are not very nice, and it, it plays a role. I mean, many not many, but I know some Arab American women who have dyed their hair blonde. They stopped taking baba ganoush and hummus in their lunch bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I mean, it has an impact on them. Now, Jack, you've said before that Hollywood and politics go hand in hand. Why do you believe that right. is true? Well, because I think, you know, particularly entertainment shows impact opinion. And you know, opinion impacts policy. It's, it's a ripple effect, you know. And politicians, by the way, are influenced by what they see and read. I mean, they're not immune just because they're politicians, academics. We all are. I mean, President Obama thinks Holtman's a good show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Jack, you've stated that Arab humanity isn't exposed. What do you not mean Not very that? often. Well, I mean, we, we don't see Arabs like we see other people. They're not portrayed like Italians or Jews or Greeks, you know, mm -hmm. or the Irish. Uh, yeah, we just don't see we don't see them with families that are happy. There are never any children in the playground. They don't sit and have dinner together. <laughs> they don't tell jokes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, that's interesting. I've never seen a movie where Arab Arabs or Arab Americans are telling jokes, <laughs> and they don't know how to love one another. Or even if they you do, know? they do tell a joke. It's usually they say it's funny, yeah. but in a serious tone. So right. there's right. never this sense of humanity as you said no no so why don't we talk about muslims in the media i know that muslims or even individuals that have an arab descent provides a negative connotation to the average american islamophobia for example well, i think i think i think what happened after 9 11 mm -hmm. for some reason uh the stereotype changed that you know there are still arab villains but but the main the primary villain are, are Muslims. So we've got Pakistanis, we've got uh, people from Afghanistan, we've got, you know, even Sikhs. You know, they can't tell the difference between a Sikh mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and an Arab or, or a Muslim. Like that. And so politicians vilify Islam in order to get elected. <laughs> and people give them money. Because most Americans have never been to a mosque. <clears throat> they don't understand the commonalities between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, you know? And I think that what we really need is we need a, we need a team of rabbis, priests, and imams that go across the country and say, look how much we have in common. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I were a wealthy Arab-American... That's what I would do. I would fund all these guys, and I'd send them to churches, synagogues, and mosques all over the United States. Yes, sir. And I'd help solve this problem. 
So how about Islamophobia? How did this said phobia come about? Why do we well, see this depicted in other religions? I, you know, again, it, it's we hate what we don't know. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, why is we it just, not depicted in other religions? Well, I mean, I... Yeah, why another... I mean, it's it's like it's like... It's like the Catholic Church right now. Look how many children have been abused over the years. And yet we do not, thank God, do not think all Catholic priests are child abuse. Mm -hmm. You know? And and if a rabbi does something wrong, we don't think all rabbis are evil. But with a Muslim, Mm -hmm. it's different. Well, now since the pressure is on Muslims. What do we do about the fact that Americans have this ex- that have seen extreme acts of violence and they were all committed in the name of Islam? So what do what do we do? Well, I think if if I, you don't use you don't if if someone commits a, a foul deed, you don't label him in the press as a Muslim. Why? I mean, look at look at look at some of the the shooters at the high school. All right, how many recent incidents have we had? Mm-hmm. Now, th- were these kids Christians or Jews? Were they Protestants, Catholics, Methodists? Were they Irish? You know, were they Romanians? But what if that kid had been a Muslim and his roots were Pakistan, in Pakistani? Don't you think that would have been part of the story? Mm-hmm. So the journalists, journalists have a, a, a role to play. You know, Jack, going off of what you said, I know uh, being an Ara- American Arab and Muslim here in the United States myself, when we hear of another attack, we pray to God that it's not linked to Muslims or Arabs at all. How much right. more difficult is it to speak out against on behalf of the Arabs and Muslims, and when we see in the media think, that many of the terrorist attacks are linked to Muslims? I think the problem is uh, you've got to speak out. But like myself, I haven't been on a major network in, in, a, in, in a decade. Now, why is that? Now, I'm not complaining. I'm saying that I think that mainstream media, American media, my media do not really want people like myself who can explain in a rational manner what's going on. So if they'll seek out, either intentionally or unintentionally, extremist voices or voices that are not too, uh, people who are not too articulate. And I think that's a shame, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I wish it weren't myself, you know, but it's people like, like me. That, that are articulate, that are knowledgeable, and who talk about peace, and who really explain the damage that this stereotype does. So how about Arab women in the media? Are they depicted any different than men? I know that the tag word oppressed is always used, but how about now? Has it changed at all? Well, you know, there are they're, they're Arab women making movies now, which I love. You know, there's Anne-Marie Jasser. There's Jackie mm-hmm. Saloom. Um, there's Roland Asif, who just came up with... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm fighting a summer cold. I mean, not a summer cold, but a winter cold. Uh, there's Roland Asif's Detroit Unleaded. But in the media, uh, Arab-American women are invisible. You know, why don't we have, for example, on the evening news, why isn't uh, Abdul Latif Hunaidi... You know, bringing us the evening news from uh, from NBC, or why isn't Layla Rafida, Rafidi uh, on CNN in the morning? Mm-hmm. I mean, why is it that we are invisible in the media when we're just as talented as anyone else? So, Jack, given that all these depictions in the media are really harming Arabs and Muslims and Americans, they're harming us all. That's correct. So what do we do? Because the, our, the strength of our country is our diversity. And when you and when you tarnish one group, you're mm-hmm. tarnishing the country, the strength of the country. So what do we do? How can we change that? Well, I think people who 
who have money should reach into their pockets and support young Arab American scholars who are majoring, majoring in media, who want to make movies, who want to get into television, who want to be on the radio. I, I think they should they should be uh, very very kind and very very generous and very active in bringing about a change. Mm-hmm. And you know we're very rich. As and I'm Lebanese. And I lost out on the business gene. But, you know, most Lebanese in the United States <laughs> are quite, and Palestinians. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, let's face it, we're very successful. But for some reason, when it comes to donating money to contest the stereotype, uh, we become the tightest of the tightwads. Mm-hmm. And shame on us. And if we're not going to take steps to change this, who, who do we expect to do it? You know? Much agreed. Jack, why don't you tell me about your recent work or anything that you're having coming up in the future? Well, I, the thing that, the two things. My wife and I have established uh, scholarships uh, that we give away every year. We've been done that for 16 years now to young Arab American scholars. And uh, each year we give away about three or four $1,000 scholarships. But they have to be mass comm majors. You can go to the ADC website and you'll find all about the scholarships. And we could use some support. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that, that's really exciting mm-hmm. is I have a collection of 4,000 artifacts uh, concerning Arab images. Everything from toys and games, comic books, movies, editorial cartoons. And those are housed at New York University. And my collection, along with my notes and all these images, all these uh, artifacts, are available for research for the public, for students, scholars. Now, do you have a specific website that people could... Visit? Yes, they can go to New York University, Asian Pacific American Institute, and uh, it's there under collections. Great. Well, Dr. Jack Shaheen, I would like to say that it's a pleasure for you to be with us today, and I would like to thank you for your time. Well, I, you're more than welcome, and I'm very proud of you that you have your own show. I wish you well. Do you know? I think Thank all the you. listeners out there that should support you. Thank you. And you really should never be it. pessimistic. You should always be optimistic. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Because the, the future belongs to the optimist. I will definitely take those words into consideration. I really appreciate it, Doctor. You're welcome. One, all the best. Once more, we were with Dr. Jack Shaheen, an expert and media critic on images of Arabs and Muslims in popular culture. His award-winning books include Real Bad Arabs, How Hollywood Vilifies a People, and Guilty, Hollywood's Verdict on Arabs After 9-11. We'll be right back after this short commercial break.